back to the scriptures. Welcome to the Universal Christian Church of Christ, a Bible teaching and preaching ministry. I'm Dr. Tron LaFavor, and I'm here with Pastor James LaFavor, mm-hmm. the senior pastor of the Universal Christian Church of Christ. We're going to begin our message today with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come to you, and we thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us during this season. We ask that you would bless this message today, and as Pastor speaks a word into our hearts, it will provide us with comfort and encouragement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The topic of our message today is the obscure king. The obscure king. In the book of Micah, his prophecy on the coming of the Messiah, Micah chapter 5, verse 2, New Living Translation says, But you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel, whose origin are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. Jesus came into the world out of obscurity. The world at large did not recognize him because he was not attractive to them. Today we come to you with this message from the Bible about Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem a week before his crucifixion. This Sunday is known to Christians as Palm Sunday. What is the meaning of Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday is a Christian celebration that falls on Sunday before Easter. The feast commemorates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. In most liturgical churches, Palm Sunday is celebrated by the blessing and distribution of palm branches or the branches of other native trees representing the palm branches. The crowd scattered branches in front of Christ as he rode into Jerusalem. In our Bible study last week, we looked at the coming of Christ that was prophesied by the Old Testament prophets. Hey, uh, Dr. Faber, I can tell you. Um, hello to all our family and friends and saved members and Christian family. It's good to sit down and talk to you uh, on this uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, we still find joy and excitement in the midst of this pandemic. Our heart goes out to the sick and suffering and people that are going through all over the land. Uh, but we know that in troubled times that God is our strength and he is our refuge and uh, we're going to be able to take refuge in him. And I just want want to say that um, we thank God for for Palm Sunday, for the upcoming Easter, but the deeper we get into the word of God, um, the more more that we develop ourselves as a Christian, you know, uh, Palm Sunday, Easter, and any other holiday. Every day is a holiness about the favor to us as we learn, grow, and get close to God and get deep in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Let us be attentive to what the Scripture says. In today's message, we will review the coming of Christ in the New Testament. As stated in our Bible expositor, the New Testament Gospels make it very clear. This prophecy was fulfilled at Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which began what we call Passion Week, the week leading up to his crucifixion and resurrection. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 21, verse 4 through 5, from the New Living Translation, The Bible says this took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem. Tell the people, and we are telling the people, and we're going to keep on telling the multitude that the Savior has come. Uh, Your warfare is over. You don't have to ever fight alone. Amen. It's in the Bible. Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He's humble, 
riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. Different king. There's never been a king like this. All of the kings before him come riding, stag staggering, celebrating victory, but nobody had, has ever come and searched low status. But, but that's who God is, and that's what he's about. He's in God's mind to present his deliverer as a deliverer for all people. And really, that this was not going to be a military conquest. This was going to be spiritual deliverance for the first time that people would be able to enjoy intimacy with God. So it was something to be excited about. Pastor, from a biblical point of view, how should Christians respond to this passage? We really should respond to this passage, Dr. LaFever, with that same kind of, kind of excitement. Uh, uh, we should uh, uh, be so stirred up and inspired and excited uh, for the people of that day and also the people for our day that we find the joy and being able to look back over history through the Bible and um, to take ourselves back for this greatest moment in history. History was the greatest event that ever happened in the world. Amen. Pastor, what was the people's response at that time when Christ entered into Jerusalem arriving well, it was a, a hallelujah a response. Uh, you know, um, they were shouting and praising and worshiping and being joyful, uh, probably getting in a spiritual dance, all these things. And uh, that was good. And, uh, you know, it was definitely appropriate uh, for that kind of response. They were excited. They were excited. They were magnifying and exalting the Lord. As they should have. They were excited about mm -hmm. the arrival of Jesus, Amen. Israel's lowly king. They exhibited a great external worship, mm -hmm. as many people do. Yeah, many people do that. But the good thing about studying the word of God and getting the accurate interpretation of that, we, we get deeper and we get past... Uh, just the outward worship uh, and emotions, which is good, but we want to get this thing on the inside where it needs to be because that is where the sustaining power is. It's just like when we go to church and, and we can we can praise God and give Him glory and honor uh, while things are going well. We got money in our pocket. We're feeling good. We're enjoying a pretty good level of hell, but do we have this thing to pass it down on the inside, uh, get that Jesus down there, that spirit that, that no, what, what, no matter what comes, that we still can express that same level of joy. A lot of people can do that, but that is what most Christians uh, open themselves up to. And I think that my favorite one, maybe people who have not put an emphasis so much um, this this inward power, this inward praise, mm -hmm. and this inward worship. Uh, I think that uh, uh, as we navigate through what we're dealing with now, mm -hmm. that people are going to come out on the other side uh, knowing that we need more than an outward praise. Amen, Pastor. Thank you for expounding on that. Mm -hmm. When our worship comes from the inside out, it will sustain because as we bear out that the people who were worshiping one day, mm -hmm. the next day, they were saying crucify. Well, we see that because some of these same people that was magnifying him and worshiping him and giving praise and giving honor, a couple of days later, read the text, they were crying crucify him. But when we got this thing on a deep level, uh, we're going to always... Uh, uh, stay with our praise and our worship and our word because that's all that, that we have and it becomes a real part of us. So we learn 
or, or funded by them. And you learn from this experience that uh, uh, we, we want to go deeper. And we, and we want, um, uh, I, I, I wish it could be on the inside. Amen. Praise God. Yes. This week, we want to look at the celebration of Palm Sunday and Easter from a scriptural based foundation. And we want to really do it from a kind of from a new perspective because, um, you know, for a long time and maybe traditionally, uh, people have gotten excited about Easter, you know, as they should, that, that's okay. But a lot of times people were thinking more about what they was going to wear or what they was going to eat or what they was going to drink or, or on this celebration. But now that we, we, we come to a, to a point where we know that I worship need to continue no matter what. That we're not able to go out to the finest restaurants. We're not able to go out uh, to the finest places uh, uh, to put on the nicest attire that we still want our praise to to uh, be manifested. And, and praise God it is. All That's over the right. land that, that Christians are stepping up and um, they, they still make them find the Lord. They're not going to let anything get them down. And they're not going to go by feelings. They get tough sometimes. But we still are going to uplift the name of the Lord and depend on Him and trust in Him and glory in the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. We want to celebrate this event from the aspiration and inspiration of our soul. That's where we want to come from, Doctor. In Psalm chapter 118, verse 24 from the New Living Translation, the Bible says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, Dr. Lyon, when I first became acquainted with this Bible verse, it did so much for me. And it was such an eye opener for me. I said, Wait a minute. You know that through our faith and through my development, Lord, I want to be able to worship the Lord because it's His name. It is a day that He has given us, uh, this Palm Sunday, whatever day. The Lord has given that to us. So let us rejoice in the day, not in the things that are going on. And it may not feel good on the outside, but it can feel good on the inside. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, what can we draw from? in the source of the psalmist in his worship. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we can draw from that is, look, I'm going to uh, magnify the Lord at all times. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to lift up his name. I'm I am going to bless the Lord. And then there's many things we learn. You know, we're going to really learn so much more about where I praise and, and and the worship should be rooted in. And then we're going to say, uh, let me make a no joy for noise. Uh, that's what these people were doing. And uh, and so that's what we can do. Let us make a joy for noise because we are saved. We have a new power Amen. and a new strength that we didn't have before the coming of Christ. Amen. Pastor, this makes me think of the mm -hmm. passage over in Matthew chapter 4. Verse That's 16 and 17 from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, the people they, who sat in darkness. Okay. Okay. The people have been there for centuries in darkness, in a dark place. Not a dark room, but in a dark perspective uh, with no hope of ever doing anything or providing for their families or maybe to have or good place to live, uh, to have ex spiritual excitement, and uh, uh, just to be able to see uh, a better day coming, mm -hmm. that they kind of felt like they were always going to be yoked under slavery, under the dominion mm -hmm. of men, that they would never, ever uh, be able to enjoy the light of the Lord. So they had been sitting there. For such a long time, as with us, that for a long time, some longer than others, but we was in darkness about who we could be and what our relationship could be with our God. 
that. And we had no hope. Some people that don't have hope, but I hope they get it today. You know, some people have no hope of being delivered. Okay. Some people have no hope of, of giving the abiding spirit in, in them. We can tell because they still keep clinging on to the darkness of the past, to the thing that held them in bondage. They don't know that that uh, there is a deliverer um, uh, on board available to us. So people still sit in darkness. And it's time to start to see our way out. And that's what Easter is all about. It is all about that. It's all about that new life and that new opportunity. Amen. Thank you for that. These people, they said in darkness, they have seen a great light. But, okay. As for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow. You know, light. sometimes, doctor, you can see the light and 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 you you can be, sometimes like people be in, in darkness and they can be oppressed for so long. Mm. They don't take the opportunity Amen. to come out of, of, of the bondage. Of, of their predicaments, but Amen. we persuade that today, and we urge that let this be a time to come out. Don't worry about what what um, what chains have held you, what emotions have held you, bondage in the past, what feelings, what what hurts, what pains, uh, whatever it may have been, what poverty, whatever have hurt you, held you past. This is a new day. Come out. Don't stay there. See the light. Amen. Don't you see the light? Thank you, Pastor. I see the light. Amen. In this scripture, we see the depth mm -hmm. of the people's despair. You can see it. They needed deliverance. They needed rescue. They needed it so bad. They needed light. Yeah, they needed it. This is why the people cried out, Hosanna. Mm -hmm. What is the biblical meaning of Hosanna? That's why they cried it. Hosanna. Okay. It is an appeal, Pastor, for deliverance. Isn't that something? It is a fear. You can see, uh, you can feel the people. You can feel it. What? They, they it's a fear. God, deliver me. Save me. Save me now. Amen. Save me now. Here comes the king. Salvation is coming. And they just cried out. And you, can't you see them? You can all, you can go back there right now and almost see it. You can see it in your own deliverance. Yes. You can see this is my opportunity. You heard a word one day and your heart, not your heart that day. And then you saw your, saw your way out. And you asked God to save you. Then you came forth and you gave a pub, public testimony. You said, I'm ready to be baptized. This is a deep, emotional, heartfelt feeling from deep within. Deep and it within. should manifest itself on the inside and outside of a person or people making the appeal. You know what? It, yeah, this should come from deep within our souls and our hearts and flows out. All uh, right, so from the inside out, from, from the inside out. And then, then the shout comes pretty much after the inner person has been touched and then and enlightened and then momentarily. That's like when a person first come and give their hearts to God, but you see it happen sometimes. Sometimes they'll go to crying and they'll, they'll, they'll go to, to shouting a little bit, whatever they do. Uh, it's because it started with them. And that was the day they met business. They met business. They heard the word that day, and, and they had that. It was touched on the inside, and then, then they had that outward expression. But you, know, you can have outward expression, which is good, but you may go back to not following the Lord. Amen. But if you ever get your soul touched, then you should be able to go forward. Thank you, Pastor. It is a cry. Ask them to be saved. Mm -hmm. As Christians all over the world during this time of year and every day, mm -hmm. we continue to bless the Lord for coming to save and to rescue us. Absolutely. We can never forget. That's why, you know, as we go through life, from the time that, that, that we give our life to the Lord uh, and we feel this simple liberation of soul and mind, get our sins forgiven, that we can never stop praising the Lord from that day on for giving thanks and uh, giving glory, glory to God, because then we know what he has done for us. And, and you can't forget that. No matter what, you know what the Lord has already done. Thank you, Pastor. We must, amen, what must the unsaved person do in order to receive this same Christ into their soul? 
Well, you know, it's in the Bible, so there are some steps that a person must take. It's in the Bible when they want the same kind of deliverance. We want to be saved. We want our soul saved. It's in the Bible. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, in those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness mm -hmm. and began preaching. Yes. His message was, repent of your sins repent. and turn to God. First step, yes. For the kingdom of heaven is near. It's available. The kingdom can come and live within. It's right near. Uh, that liberation can come. So close. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, his voice is shouting in the wilderness. The prophet said it too. The true prophet back in the Bible. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. You got to make, make preparation for him to come in. Clear the road for him. Mm -hmm. Verse 8 says, You know what, Dr. Look, you got to move out the obstacles. You got to move out the things that would block Christ coming in. Now, he's not just going to come into any kind of unclean place. And the place become clean as we repent. Amen. And say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of going the same way, being the same way, acting the same way, responding the same way. And, and you just move some stuff out of the way. Move with resentment. I move past unforgiveness, past hurts. I'm, I remove this out of the way so Christ can come. Past disappointments, past excuses, or uh, this uh, need for entitlements, all of this on the other side. Verse 8 says, prove by the way you live. Mm -hmm. You got to prove it. Repented of your sins yeah. and turn to God. Prove it. Yeah. Christ is already here. The prophet of Zechariah in chapter 9, verse 9, was fulfilled on Christ's triumphal entry. This prophecy of Zechariah was fulfilled. Yes. In Zechariah 9 and 9, the Bible says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Mm -hmm. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. You know, Doctor, I think that every time a person surrender to the Lord and truly give their hearts to Christ, that this prophecy is being amen, uh, fulfilled over and over again. That person that was going the wrong way had no hope, stuck in darkness, they, they, they get liberated. This passage is revealed again and again. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous, victorious, yet he's humble. And riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. Pastor, first, thank you for shedding light on the importance of Palm Sunday and how vital it is for us to not only have joy on the outside, but have it on the inside. Yeah. Well, we have to uh, look for this joy. We have to test ourselves and, and make sure that, that we are replenishing this joy because a lot of times tests and trials will come but let us replenish our joy each day keep the spirit of palm sunday uh, in our hearts every day pastor would you close on the importance of receiving christ how important it is for a person to receive christ it is the most absolutely essential thing that we can ever do because uh, first of all, it gives us power. It's in the Bible, X one. When we really, truly um, allow this king, the king of kings, to come into our lives, into our heart, he gives us power that we will be a light to everybody around us, to our children, to our families, our sisters, our brothers, that we'll bring light to them and we'll have power to stand up are uh, in the midst of, of, of trials and tests. When we are tested with our friends and our family, and when they try us, sometimes they will try you. Sometimes they will test you. You still will be able to, to have the power 
not to fight back. You will have that spirit of non uh, 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 aggression, uh, none, no reason to have to get even with you. Mm-hmm. You'll wait on the Lord. You're Amen. present in the wait on the Lord. You have the power to do it. We can't Amen. just let you look about the Bible, my friends, because when people touch your feelings and your emotions, they reject you, and sometimes people don't act right with you, and sometimes they even allow you. If you don't have power, you're going to fight back, or you're not going to talk to them again, or you want to wash your hands with them. It takes power. So that is the reason why it's so important to receive them. Thank you so much. Okay. And there's another thing that is so important too, Dr., is that through repentance, he give us this thing that we all need, that thing that keeps us, and that is the Holy Ghost. You'll right. find it in Acts 2.38. And then, then he said it, it will be be given to our, our, our children. It can be passed down to them. And, and the um, the Holy Spirit is the very nature of Christ. And within our character, we'll be able to have the impartation of Amen. God's character in our life. And if we don't ever do that, if we always um, refuse to let this king come in and rule in our hearts and our Amen. lives, we will miss out on that. So it makes no difference whatever that we may acquire in life, uh, as far as anything, uh, uh, materially, all of that, uh, then we, at some point it won't mean anything. We can never have the spiritual influence in life that we were born to have. So it's absolutely necessary. And so we, as Christians, we celebrate this day. We celebrate uh, the fact that the king... Uh, he came, uh, uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he came to the world, and it's a fact because we see the difference that it makes uh, in the life of all of those that receive him. And uh, we see it, and we know it, and we're thankful for it. And I thank God for you, my son, that, 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 that you as the, you know, the young man, that, 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 that you received him as Lord of your life, and, uh, and, I, and I know what he means to you. And, um, and thank God for everybody who has received him. And I thank all of you yes. for being so responsive and, and listening to the message and get your joy in, get your joy in. And on this Sunday, you probably can praise and wish it more than if you uh, were in church. So this Sunday, you can just steal away and shout and praise and say hallelujah. That's what some people need to do. Because sometimes we've been ashamed to do it. But now... Uh, let us feel away and just just almost have a little holy spell Amen. of shouting and rejoicing. Let's make up for some of that time when we didn't rejoice. Praise God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to our Back to the Scriptures message. May God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine.